Hello, good afternoon. How's everyone doing? What an awesome crowd today. It's wonderful to see you all here. Is anybody their first time for uh, one of our Chef Shannon presentations? Great, oh, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, you're uh, in for a treat. Uh, Shannon does a great job and everyone always learns a lot and um, takes home some good ideas. So um, I just wanted to take a brief moment to say thank you for coming. Remember to turn off uh, your cell phone ringer if you haven't done that yet. Um, also want to take a moment to let you know what's coming up in the next few days. We've got a lot of programming coming up uh, over the next two months. We've still got a whole lot of programming this season, but just this week, tomorrow, we'll have the Palm Spring uh, Gay Men's Chorus. Uh, and they're, they're a lot of fun, always really upbeat performance, so we're looking forward to that. And then on Thursday, we'll have one of our Writers Series events brought to you by the Writers Festival uh, with Julia Whalen, who has been called the Adele of uh, audiobooks. So she's a narrator of audiobooks, and she's also written some of her own. She lives right here in the Coachella Valley, um, and she is uh, just ha having seen her speak, she's fascinating. So she's going to be talking about her most recent book as part of that series, and we'll also be giving away uh, 200 copies to the first 200 people. Uh, if you are interested in that, it's one of our premier events, so make sure uh, you get here early, and um, Rancho Mirage residents and our donors for that one do get priority seating, so that's one of those special events. So hopefully we'll see uh, some of you for that, but then uh, if you haven't picked up our program guide yet, they're in the back of the room, and there's a lot of stuff coming up, so we're really excited about it. And all of this program... But with that, I want to hand things over. So without further ado, please help me welcome Chef Shannon Bush. Thank you, TJ. Wow, what a great crowd today. And uh, yes, thank you to the Library Foundation and the library for making this possible. They sponsor this so that this class can be offered uh, free to all of you. So. Thank you to the library and everyone that helps put this together. Um, wow, lots of new faces today. How many, I know TJ had you raise your hand, but I couldn't quite see. Who's new guessing, right? <laughs> My friend is here today from Scotland, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so for those of you that are new, um, I want it to be a fun, interactive class. So. If you have a question, let me know. Um, chances are, if you're wondering about something, someone else in the group may be as well. So don't hesitate to uh, get my attention and ask a question at any point. So the first thing, well, Buddha bowls today. What's a Buddha bowl? Well, it's just an entree-sized bowl that has a complete meal in it. Most of theirs, and some feedback that I've gotten is that it seems like too much work to put this together. So with that in mind, I put these three recipes together for you today. Did everybody get a copy of the recipes? Yeah, so um, these are really easy. And in fact, the one on the last page, I decided to try and um, put a bowl out there that you could buy many of the ingredients ready-made. Now, I know this is a cooking class, and I can teach you how to make all of those things from scratch, but what I'm hearing is that um, a lot of you want things that don't take you all day to make. So this is a nod towards that. But I am going to start with the first recipe today, the barbecue tofu bowl. And because I don't have a bowl, it's actually going to go on a platter today. But when you make these bowls at home, 
You can easily do it for a single meal, or if you're entertaining, you can make a really fun buffet um, with a, for Buddha bowls. You can just put all the different ingredients and let your guests go down the line and fill their bowls. A lot of fun. So this one's going to start with some fresh greens. So these are just some fresh. So salad greens. These look beautiful. And I'm going to take my other ingredients. What do I have here? So the other thing you want to do when you're cooking is make your things colorful. Remember that the different colors in the food that we eat represent different nutrients. So if you have a variety of colors in your food, then you're getting a variety of the nutrients that your body needs. So. I have some um, black beans that I rinsed really well, and I've mixed them with um, some barbecue sauce. And you can just use your favorite barbecue sauce, but it gives them a nice flavor. Well, I don't have a favorite. I like a lot of different ones. Um, I like my homemade one. I have a homemade one that I like too, but, um, but just to make it easy, just buy your favorite store-bought barbecue sauce. And I'm going to put a mound of these um, black beans on here. Sure. They freeze well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um, made a huge batch of chili this weekend for a chili cook off, and it was loaded with red beans, one of my favorites in chili. And uh, a lot of the leftovers are in the freezer right now, so <laughs> yeah, they freeze just fine. I did not win. Yeah. That's okay. There's always next year. Do they get very dry when you freeze them or no? No. No. They're fine. Yeah. It works. All right. So we want to get some color on here. I've got some diced red bell pepper. And I have some actually diced tomato in here as well. So we'll get that going on either side, make it look pretty. Let's see. Okay, I think I'm gonna cook the tofu now. So I took some tofu that I pressed dry with a dishcloth and that's a really important step when you're cooking with tofu. I used some extra firm tofu today which does have less water in it than um, say soft or uh, medium or firm tofu but it still does have some extra moisture in it so I always take a, just a clean dish towel wrap the block of tofu in it and put a weight on top to kind of help it press that water out. Um, it's an important step because you're... And then I put it in the barbecue sauce. So right now I'm just going to warm dry, cut it into the size of pieces that I wanted. Today I just made little triangular shapes and then uh, I cooked it in avocado oil. Avocado oil is my favorite uh, oil for high heat. It does not break down as quickly as many other oils, including olive oil. And it has a very neutral flavor. It doesn't make your food taste like oil. Did I cook the tofu on high heat? Yes, like a medium high. Medium high to high. So 
So while that tofu is warming up, I'm going to get the corn on the cob ready. Who was here at the last class a couple weeks ago? So you'll remember for that class, um, I had to buy frozen corn on the cob because corn on the cob is not in season right now. So I had a little bit left in my freezer from that class. I would probably just skip it in this. Um, it has the black beans in it, which make it hearty and filling. So maybe just the beans. Uh, the question was, um, if you don't eat soy, what, um, you know, what would a good substitute be? Um, yeah, tempeh, someone suggested tempeh. That's, the texture just, I don't like the texture for this dish. Um, maybe some type of uh, seitan, which is made with the protein of wheat, um, or just use beans. All right, I'm going to let that sit a moment. Then I'm going to take my corn on the cob and uh, use my knife and shave the kernels off. But I'm going to stick really close to the base, the cob, so that my pieces stay intact. Like so. That way I can use them to make the dish look pretty. So ideally you'd be doing this with fresh corn on the cob, but I'm just a little ahead of the season here. So I'm going to take the tofu, get this on here. I think I will just put it out along the top of the black beans. Can you smell the tofu? Is anybody hungry? <laughs> sure. Do you press it dry? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, a tofu takes a surprising amount of time to cook. I think um, easily a half hour. Yeah, yeah. The more moisture in it, the more the more time you're going to need cooking it. Um, I don't know. You might try the freezing technique. Have you ever done that? You can get a nice texture with tofu if you freeze it first. Yeah, I like to cut it into the size that I want to use first, dry it off, pat it dry, and then freeze it. What happens is the water that's in the tofu, of course, expands as it freezes. So it makes these little air pockets in your tofu. So it has a really nice, light uh, texture when you eat it. But you do have to press it again after it thaws, yeah. I saw another question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, dipping the the uh, tofu in cornstarch before you um, before you put it in the pan or an air fryer in her case um, will help. Uh, coat it and um, it will help it brown up. So I'm just putting everything on here. A little extra corn. 
And then I'm going to drizzle the, um, the dressing. And for this one, I made a barbecue ranch. Just going to drizzle this around. Yes. There's quite a few places that have it now. Um, there's a brand called Follow Your Heart that has a vegan ranch. Actually, Hidden Valley Ranch, the original ranch, has a vegan version. You can get it at Walmart, Target. It's pretty easy to find nowadays. No, I don't think, if you're used to regular ranch, I don't think you'd know the difference. And you yeah. Mix it with barbecue sauce? Yeah. My favorite barbecue sauce, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so yep. Yeah. <laughs> so this is coming together just about there. I'm going to add a few green onions. And then another favorite little ready-made thing that'll take this dish over the top are some uh, crispy onions. <laughs> I'm not the only one that likes these things. <laughs> there we go. That's our first bowl slash platter. <laughs> I'll put these over here. Okay. So I made a list of vegetables to use for this next dish, but um, you can use any kind of vegetables you like. It's a roasted vegetable bowl, um, but if you do stray from the suggestions, just make sure you have a variety of colors for your nutrition and a variety of textures just to keep it interesting. Don't want a boring dinner. Um, I made, I think, everything on this list today. Yep. And I left about half of it at home. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you all to use your imaginations of to use this blend. It's a rice medley. It's frozen rice in a bag. And I don't know if you've ever tried this. For the first few years that frozen rice became available, I turned my nose up to it and said, hey, you know, how ridiculous. It's so easy to make rice. Why would anybody buy frozen rice? Well, I've changed my tune a little bit on that. <laughs> there are just, I'm sure you have those days, some days when you just run out of time and don't, you know, you can't put an hour into making your meal. Having a variety of rice in the freezer is really handy. And there, no, there's nothing added to them. They're just cooked with water. So they're not seasoned. There's, you know, nothing in them. No sodium. But I love this medley. It's a nice, healthy blend. So, <laughs> you can certainly make your own rice, but yeah, it's good. It's delicious. There's no difference than making it from home. Um, so why not? Why not have some in the freezer? Do you make quinoa or do you substitute? I don't. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's a nice idea. Hmm. Maybe next time. Um, she toasts her quinoa before she cooks it. Yeah, it's a great idea. When I cook rice without using a rice kick cooker, I do it that way. I put the rice in a dry pan, heat it up until it, the color turns uh, white, and then I add the water. So same technique would work for the quinoa. Um, so I have a variety of vegetables. And it does take two steps to cook these the way I suggest on here, but I do think it's worth the effort. I roasted them with just a little bit of avocado oil until the vegetables turn tender. And at that point, I pull them out of the oven and I always cook them on the parchment paper. And I use, I pick up the edges of the parchment paper, shake them into a mixing bowl, and that's when I toss them with the sauce. And then they go back in the oven on that same piece of parchment paper. It uh, makes cleanup a breeze, it makes transferring them between the bowl and, and whatnot. You can't put the sauce or the marinade that I gave you on there in the beginning because they will burn before the insides cook if you do it that way. So it does need the two-step process. So I'm just gonna eyeball my veggies here real quick since I'm not working with um, the variety that I had originally planned. <laughs> gonna see. So I, do, I did make it today with these beautiful um, fingerling potatoes, one of my favorites. They're so creamy and rich inside. They cook beautifully, they roast beautifully. I also have some diced uh, sweet potato, a little bit of asparagus. I have some whole carrots, some green beans, and some beautiful purple cauliflower. So this is still gonna be beautiful. It's all gonna work out. trying to use up this big platter. <laughs> um, I've got my baby potatoes, my fingerling potatoes, and then um, I'll add the sweet potatoes. The sweet potatoes are cut into small cubes and then roasted in the oven with the avocado oil. And then I take them out when they are tender and I mix them in the uh, marinade and I put them back in the oven until they brown. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, what I do normally is I have two different pans that go in the oven. Um, one pan will be the root vegetables, the things that are really dense, some beautiful wedges of green cabbage, and some purple onion all on the same. They all have a similar cooking time. Boy, I wish you could have seen my roasted cabbage. It was so beautiful. <laughs> Hope you'll take my word for it. <laughs> How did you cut it? Just like a, like a slice? What I did is I cut the cabbage in half and I took the core out and then I cut um, three wedges. And then I just put them on their sides and roasted them until they were brown and crispy. They really were beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 400, 425. Oh, 
chuck them after the, about um, 15 minutes or so and see how they're doing. Uh, this is a purple cauliflower. Oh, the cabbage was green. Yeah. And the cauliflower is purple, yes. It does, but it's just pretty. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, different colors, going to be different nutrients. It's very interesting, and I can't quote you exact um, quantities of nutrients off the top of my head, but if you look at the nutrient difference just in the simple bell pepper, if you look at a green versus an orange or a red, the nutrient content really varies dramatically. It's the same, you know, same plant. I don't have a way to add it to the Ranch Mirage website. Um, I can put it on my Instagram tonight if you want. Yep. Well, it's intended to be a big bowl, but I was going to put the wedges, you know, just kind of spread them out and then fill in the gaps with another colored vegetable. Um, I'm going to also sprinkle this guy with some green onion. And then to offset um, the flavors, so the marinade in the recipe has maple syrup in it, giving a little bit of sweetness to the dish. So I'm going to offset that. You know, it's all about balance with the dishes. Um, I have a little bit of a horseradish drizzle that I'm going to put on top. Horseradish is just um, underused, I think. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. So if you were at the last class, you may remember that I told you that um, it actually counts as a cruciferous vegetable. If you're trying to eat some cruciferous veggies every day, if you want a break from your Brussels sprouts and broccoli, you can have some horseradish. Um, I think you need to have a teaspoon of it, but if you put it into a dressing or a sauce, it's pretty easy to get a teaspoon in. So, horseradish is, yeah. it's got a very bold flavor, but that's why when it's balanced with these other things, um, you know, it's not overpowering. They complement each other. Yes, they're very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> no, not strong like a radish. They're just kind of more like um, maybe closer to hick. <laughs> yeah. Um, not, not so much. <laughs> yeah. If they're assembled, no, but if you keep your components separate, then yeah. Um, but I did try to make a variety, like I made one of the, the one I just did would yield four servings, four bowls, but I've done some that are two bowls and yeah, it would work. <laughs> Well, you've already got the whole grain and the veggies. You could add a bean. Any type of bean would work in there, or um, tofu, some mushrooms.
So this next one we're going to call an Italian bowl. I'm trying to decide if I want to make it in this little bowl so you actually see one in a proper bowl. I think I will. So if you're new here, um, this food actually goes to feed the wonderful life. The star of the next dish is um, gnocchi, the Italian dumpling. Um, they're mostly potato. Some lucky people are going to go home with some today. But there's a lot of different ways you can cook these. And these are kind of nice to have around because they're shelf stable. They'll just sit there and they'll be ready for you when you're ready to cook with them. But um, to cook them, you just throw them in some boiling water, and as soon as they float, you remove them from the water. They're really fast, just takes a couple of minutes. So for this dish, I've um, pre-cooked the gnocchi. Um, I didn't think you wanted to sit here while I boiled water and did that. But um, now that they've been cooked, I am going to crisp them up in the pan. So they'll have like a little, a uh, nice crisp outer shell and the inside will be tender and delicious. So I'm going to actually um, crisp these in a little bit of vegan butter. There are a lot of good options for you out there if you're wanting to try some vegan butter. It depends what you're doing. For baking, I like to use this brand. It's called Earth, Earth's Best. And I like it for baking because it comes in these individual um, blocks, just like standard butter, so that you know your measurements and, and whatnot. Um, Trader Joe's has a nice butter, but it's a big uh, rectangle, it's not divided up, so it's a little trickier if you want to put it in a, you know, a baking recipe. But it's great for making garlic toast or cooking or something like that. But I just happen to have some Earth's Best on hand, so that's what I'm using today. But yeah, I don't think uh, in most cases you would know the difference. So. Yep. And, you know, I tell people, if you're new to eating this way, you're curious, when you run out of mayonnaise, try a plant-based mayonnaise. Just slowly replace things like that. And the other thing I want to make sure you know, if you're at that point in your journey with this, um, if you try one product and it doesn't taste good, try another one before you give up on it. There are some really good products out there, and there are some really bad products. <laughs> so um, please uh, don't try one and think, oh, all vegan food's awful. Not the case. All right, so these are just going into the hot butter, plant butter, that go gradually. Um, so, you know, if you decide you're going to change and you go home and you throw away everything in your pantry and you go out and you buy new things that you're not familiar with, those are the folks that in a couple of months are back to their old ways. So I do encourage you to um, go at it gradually. I know a lot of people ask me about the meat substitutes, just in case anybody was thinking about that. Um, Beyond Beef, Impossible Beef, those things. I think that those things are wonderful tools for people that are transitioning. I don't think they're something great to rely on for, you know, forever and ever, but if you try to go from the typical American diet to, uh, I'm going to borrow a phrase from Dr. Michael Greger, if you go from the American diet to kale and quinoa overnight, 
it usually doesn't go very well. You're going to feel a little disappointed. So go at it gradually. The ones I'm giving out as door prizes today are the regular size. But I thought I'd try these cute little ones for something different. Uh, they're made with potato, yes. Yeah. These are actually really easy to make on your own if you feel so inclined. Um, mashed potato, a little flour, maybe a little salt and pepper. And then you just take a spoon in your dough and make these little shapes with them. Drop them into boiling water. So now that they're starting to cook a little bit, I'm going to add some fresh garlic in there. I didn't put the garlic in in the beginning because garlic browns up very quickly. Oh, she's amateur. <laughs> So if you weren't hungry before, hopefully the smell of the uh, buttery garlic will get to you. <laughs> Is the garlic getting back there to the back row? Yeah? Hi. <laughs> See some familiar faces. That's so nice. So they're not browning up that quickly, so let's kill some time. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. Well, what I recommend is making your pieces of tofu smaller. Smaller or thinner. Yeah, tofu is a blank canvas. It's very bland if you don't do anything with it. So the key is to really infuse a lot of flavor into it. And even if you marinated a block of tofu for ages, that flavor's not going to really get in to the heart of the tofu. So start with smaller pieces um, would be my first recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can mash it in a pan like a potato masher. Um, as you cook it. Um, another kind of fun thing to do with tofu is make it into egg salad. Mash it um, with some mustard and pickles and onion and some black salt. Yep. Ah, okay. You've done your research. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah. In a soup or a broth. Um, but yeah, just keep those pieces smaller, I think, is the key thing. I mean, yes, you can marinate and you can do different things, but the bottom line is if you want that flavor going all the way through, you've got to start with little pieces. Yeah. Uh, we're experimenting There's a popular black bean one on the market, and I don't care for it. Um, and honestly, I can't think of a black bean ready-made one that I do enjoy. Yeah. Just honest answer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have a, a record. 
Um, uh, no, my, <laughs> I actually have a website that is just waiting to be published as soon as I have a minute. Um, but the best way to keep up with me is on Instagram. I try and keep everything up to date on there right now. At Chef Shannon's Way, yeah. I am working on a cookbook right now that I hope will be ready um, by the fall classes. Um, but when I get that website up and running, I'll have more details on there, but I'll keep Instagram up to date as well. Okay, these are getting close. Sure. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, there's some Italian sausage substitutes that are decent really? for that purpose. Yeah. Can you get that at yeah. Yeah. Um, try one of the frozen ones. Um, and the, the breakfast sausages have more of that sausage flavor in it that you might be looking for. Um, but yeah, just dice the little patties up and they'd be good in the soup. There's some, what brand are they? Either Beyond, I think, I think they're Beyond, but they have a spicy breakfast sausage. It's flavored nicely. It might, might work for you. All right, these are just about there. <laughs> so the different components of the salad, I'm gonna use some fresh spinach. I'm gonna use some ready-made tabbouleh. If any of you feel like making your own tabbouleh, you can always go to the library's YouTube channel and look for my, I think it was the last Mediterranean class. There are all the classes in there. Um, library are, they're listed by the topic and, or the theme. And so I believe it's the Mediter Mediterranean class that has the tabbouleh recipe. So using tabbouleh, I'm using some bruschetta. If you just want a quick substitute for bruschetta, you can um, just dice some tomatoes, some nice rich tomatoes, put a little Italian dressing on them and let them sit for a little bit. That's a quick way to make a substitute. I actually, I think uh, there's a bruschetta recipe as well on the an Italian class that the library has on their YouTube channel. These are taking forever. I hope nobody's in a hurry. <laughs> I'm just, I live in fear of running over my allotted time here because that is, I'm known for that. I'm really trying to be better in 2024. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cook the spinach, but I'm going to wilt it. And to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these, um, if they ever cook, from the bowl. <laughs> and I'm going to keep as much of the, um, the garlic and the butter in there as possible. And then I'm going to turn the, the stove off and put the spinach in and just let it sit and wilt a moment and that garlicky butter will infuse it with a little flavor too. Excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't ever put the garlic in right away. Um, it's gonna burn up before, you know, long before your vegetables are tender, so. It's not, yeah, surprisingly, right? <laughs> but uh, I am going to remove it now because otherwise, who knows how long we'll be here, right? <laughs> so 
I'm just going to use my spoon to put these in a bowl here. Oops. Just a slight golden brown to the outside. Sorry, it takes, it takes me a while to figure out where the voice came from. <laughs> Going to add a little salt and pepper too. Just a smidge. Okay, so put this in the pan. I'm going to try and reserve a little bit of the butter. It is just like regular butter. Use it exactly the same as you would. Okay, so in the spinach goes into the hot pan. I want it to retain some of its texture and color. Don't want it to turn to mush. Just going to stir it around so that the flavor gets to all of it. Whoops, did I do it again? <laughs> Sorry. doesn't take long. It's already wilting down there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Into the bowl. Yes. And thank you for asking. Yeah. There's nutrition in the whole plant, and in most cases, all parts of the plant are going to be good for you. Um, thank you for asking that, because that reminds me, someone asked if I use the stems. Um, yes, I do. But I also want to point out that with the, um, the veggies that I roasted in the oven, the sweet potato, the little potatoes, leave the skin on. It's a fabulous source of fiber, and just about everybody needs more fiber in their life. So. Don't peel it off. Okay. We've got the spinach. And I'm going to put these cute little mini bits of gnocchi in here. Do that. And then I have this nice little chickpea salad, garbanzo bean salad, CC bean salad. <laughs> have I hit everybody? Are we <laughs> different parts of the world call these things uh, by different names, but it's the same thing. I grew up calling them garbanzo beans, but if you know them by another name, same thing. I mean, there's, there's going to be different varieties of everything, but nothing dramatically different that I've ever noticed. This one is store-bought. This um, bowl is for on the super easy, fast and easy dish. But if you wanted to make your own super easy drain and rinse a can of these um, beans, Put a marinade on them or some Italian vinaigrette or dressing. A um, little bit of onion and garlic, tomato, a little parsley. And I've got some tabbouleh. So we're adding another, um, a nice healthy grain. Tabbouleh is made with bulgur, nutrient rich whole grain. A 
what am I missing here? I'm going to add a little bit of the tomatoes. And you can, I, I hope you'll try these, um, and I hope you'll have fun with it. You can, uh, your inner artist can shine when you put these bowls together. And it's a fun thing to do with a group of friends, too. Everybody can be responsible for one component of your bowl. You can have a good time putting them all together. So I'm going to add a little bit of um, pesto as well. It's like a pesto drizzle here. <laughs> I am so excited. I am not going to run late today. <laughs> I think it's the second time ever. You can buy the pine nuts toasted, yeah. Okay, is anybody following along with the recipe? Did I miss anything? Green onions are on. Pesto's on. Did I make? I think it's all here. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So for those of you that have been here before, you're probably tired of hearing me say it, but I get so excited when somebody goes home, makes one of my recipes, and emails me a picture. <laughs> it makes my day, truly. So there you are. Somebody, some wonderful person right over there emailed me a picture of a burrito she made from my recipe just a couple of days ago, and it made my whole day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so on the back of your recipe list today, does anybody have a number one? How about number three? Come on up. I couldn't believe I hadn't made it before. Oh, awesome. oh thank you for the picture. <laughs> Bye, thank you. You don't get the sense of the appreciation on the screen. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, which one? You want to try that? Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hope to see you next month. I'll be back in May. There are two more people with numbers. No? Oh, yeah. Would you like some bouillon or some beans? Okay. One more person? Nobody? Oh, thank you. Oh, the gochujang cauliflower? 